I, when I was 11, I felt really deeply miserable. Like I pulled a whole BoJack Horseman. Like every clip I've seen of BoJack Horseman reminds me of when I was 11, which is why I have a hard time watching it. Like I, the thing is when I was 11, I developed my own idea of predeterminism, which I briefly mentioned earlier. And this, it's, it's solid. It's, it's bulletproof from what I can tell. Maybe not. You know, you can never discount these things. You can never, um, you can never count out the, the creativity of the human mind. But I haven't been able to do anything to poke any holes in this idea that I've come up with of predeterministic, um, of a predeterminist universe. And because I, con- I contemplated a lot of bad things like a, a few times. And one time I came dangerously close to letting the intrusive thoughts win. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about the predetermin- predeterminism theory I made. Uh, not theory. I wouldn't say theory. Because theory it is a bit more robust. It's more of a... It's more of just an intrusive thought. Because... Even today I still can't disprove it. It's not like it's not like it's an unfalsifiable claim and and I just I, there's no way for me to disprove it logically. Like I can always shift the goalpost type thing. No. It's it is falsifiable. But it follows such a consistent line of bulletproof logic that like I've 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 looked into um answers to this like the whole um, idea of the quantum consciousness that has uh, free will at a level that we can't perceive. But I'm like, humans are not, we're not divine creatures. We are not sophisticated at the, at, the le- at the quantum level to take advantage of that level of free will. That opens up a whole different can of worms, in my opinion. And... Actually, if the, if the whole theory is true about the, the many worlds interpretation and there being a universe that has every single instance of everything happening ever, every decision you can ever make, and every decision ever, anybody could ever make, then in that case, this is actually true. Because there will always be an instance that will exist in the future of you doing everything that you will end up doing. So whether you like it or not, mm, no, that one can be interpreted either way. I don't want to go into all this detail though, because it's like, I'm not strong enough to handle it. As much as I might say, and I do say this a lot, that I'm such a strong person and I have a lot of energy. Secretly, I'm actually not. Like, I know my limits. I didn't, I didn't know what predeterminism was at the time. I found out in life a little later on when someone told me about it, um, my RC teacher. Um, I was, like, really, really upset and I tried to explain this to her and she told me, yeah, that's called predeterminism. Um, but yeah, when I developed the idea, I, like, couldn't function, dude. Everything just became hell. Like, I couldn't go out with people. I couldn't talk to my family. Like, I tried to convince my parents of this. And they were like, I kind of get what you're saying. I remember them saying that. And I was, like, so excited that I was able to get through to them, kind of. But I wasn't able to get through to them fully. And I was, like, bawling. Like, I was not bawling. I was, like, crying endlessly trying to explain to them. It was, like, it shattered my my entire self-worth and all of that it was that was like the worst year of my life no that was not that was the worst year of my life like that was the year where i told my parents like no i'm not doing good right now please don't let anyone come to my birthday party i don't want to have one and then my parents still brought people as a surprise because they didn't know what i was going through they thought it was just some like like they thought that they didn't Peg me for having such a sophisticated thought at 11 years old. They thought I was just being a brat. So they brought people over for my birthday. And I had to expend so much mental effort. um, 
trying to please them and trying to make them uh, think that I was okay when really I wasn't. And after that, I never wanted to have a birthday party again. And now, even nowadays, they, they, they know that, that we don't do birthday parties for me. We do it for everybody else in the family except for me. Even when it was like time for me to graduate, like my brother, they do a graduation party for him, like a surprise party. But when it was time for me to graduate, they told me like, my mom came up to me and she was like, hey, remember how we did that surprise thing for us? We were thinking about doing it for you as well. But we, you know, we know how it is. We don't want to like surprise you with it. I wanted to ask you actually, like, is that something you'd want to do? And I told her, no, um, I can't deal with that sort of thing anymore. Like that was such a traumatic experience. It was, it was a, it was a hellish year for me after I developed this idea. And I, do, I just don't think about it to this day. I just, I can't. That's why I love Rick and Morty so much because that's Rick's catchphrase. His catchphrase is just don't think about it. You know, the wubba lubba dub dub or whatever, just that's what it translates to in, in, in the show. It translates to just don't think about it. I don't like Rick and Morty so much anymore. It's not, it's, it doesn't seem all that self-aware like it used to, but, um, it seems kind of, kind of showy, kind of, um, inefficient. If they take way too many words to say something actually profound that could be said in, in a much, much quicker way. And also the quotes that people actually take from Rick and Morty, like, um, like the one that's been popping off on TikTok lately, like the, oh, uh, to live is to risk it all. Otherwise, you're just a randomly assembled uh, set of molecules f uh, endlessly being f pushed around by the universe, floating around, like, whatever. Um, whatever he said in that quote. Like, that is, a, is not a, a very intelligent thing to say. That's not something Rick would say. Because either way, it's not like... Rick is not the kind of person to say to live is to risk it all in advocacy for people to risk it all. Because regardless of how you ended up in that situation, you ended up in the situation because of the circumstances you were in. No matter if you risk it all or you risk nothing, you are always, you have been and always forever will be a randomly assembled set of molecules floating through space with your whole life determined for you. Which is odd how that relates, that quote relates. But yeah, every time somebody makes a, a, a TikTok with that sound to it, that, um, that background noise, background sound of Rick saying that, I always think to myself like, dog, like you clearly didn't think about what Rick actually said. I get you're trying to be like motivational and all, but like there's better ways to be motivational than that. But yeah, the, the, this 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 whole idea that I came up with is the reason why at least I used to really really love Rick and Morty. Uh, there was a time where it was my favorite show ever. But yeah, I just I don't I just don't think about it, and I still follow that same principle. One day I will get back to this idea, though. Because I know, like, deep down when I, when I, when I pierce this, I, the, like, my inner thoughts, I, I know I'm living a lie. Like, just to keep myself alive, basically, I don't think about the implications of this idea. And one day, not, not today, though, I, I don't have enough mental strength. And, like, don't worry. Like... Not for like another like five years at least, okay? I don't want to get put on no suicide watch list that'll take my personal freedoms away. But one day, not now, one day I will get back this idea. It's risky, and it's taken me to a bad place before, but I'll get back to it eventually. But yeah. Oh, and because of this, I w by the time I was 11, I, had, I was a full, like full-blown, big-time atheist. Like... Daily Reddit user and all. Um, I remember I had a subreddit. I literally, I made my own subreddit. And the entire subreddit was for debating the existence of God. And every day I would debate with people. Like, you think about the stereotypical Reddit user. There is, I doubt there is a single Reddit user who was as, like, anti-God 
as I was when I was 11. I was going hard, dude. It was ridiculous. Like, I wasn't a stereotypical Reddit user. The stereotypical Reddit, Reddit users were mini-me's. They were based off of my behavior, bro. I played a role in, in what Reddit has become today. The connotations that it has today. So, yeah. That was... That was an interesting year. I have no contributions from that year. I have that one, but I'm not talking about it. 